Luke chapter 9, um, we're going to start in verses 20 um, this morning. Luke chapter 9, um, starting in verse 20. Uh, before we get into Luke chapter 9, just want to mention, some of you know that I've been having um, some problems with my leg, and, uh, uh, you know, just, it was actually getting to a point where it was, it, it was hard to stand. It started to hurt and ache. I thought it was sciatica. I didn't know what it was. Um, then it came down and started really focusing in, in my left calf, and uh, so my left calf would hurt, and, and then uh, my left ankle was starting to swell. Um, so uh, a couple of things. One is I, um, I started wearing these cool socks. Um, those are um, they're compression socks. I used to wear them because I was a young runner. Um, now I wear them just because I'm old. <laughs> and... Uh, and so that's one thing I've done. Something else I wanted to mention is that, you know, whenever you start having um, any kind of physical problem, you go to the Internet, right? And you start um, looking and see uh, what's causing this problem. And I found out what it is, and so I have an announcement to make to you. I'm pregnant. <laughs> that was the first thing that came up when I put in all, uh, all my symptoms. That's the first thing that showed up. Um, so that must be, you know, if it's on... If it's on the internet, it has to be true, and so, uh, so we'll see. No, but pray for me. I've um, actually taken advantage of this. I've not done any chores for about two weeks now, and uh, so pray for Darla as she's trying to be patient with me through this time. Um, Erica even offered to bring a wheelchair and, and, and roll me out in a wheelchair. Um, so if, it, if there is one in the back, if it gets bad, um, she can head on back and get that. But I'll try to stand here for this time. Okay, Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 20. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. But he warned them and instructed them not to tell this to anyone, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. And he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? You know, I find it interesting here in this passage of Scripture that when Peter confesses who Jesus is, the Christ of God, and Matthew records it, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Uh, but when he does that, that's when Jesus tells him to be quiet about it, not to tell others. And, you know, Jesus hasn't really been that secretive about who he is. I mean, he's shown in several ways of that he is the Messiah and that the, and that the people should um, believe him in that. Uh, but now at this point, he's telling them to be quiet about it, and he's also starting to tell them for the very first time What's going to happen um, eventually when they get to Jerusalem? He tells them that the plan is that he will be arrested. He will be rejected um, by his people. He will be crucified. And then he will raise from the dead. And again, we know that this was not what the people expected of the Messiah, right? They expected the Messiah to come, but they expected that the Messiah would come and reign over his people, not be killed by his people, um, and then raised from the dead. They didn't expect for him to die on the cross, but this is the message that Jesus is going to give his followers from this point on, and he's going to give it several times, and you'd think that they would figure it out and be ready um, when it did happen, but this, this message of a death and resurrection, it was hard for the disciples to comprehend. And so this is part of what Jesus is doing here when he's with his disciples at this particular point, ready to move forward to that time when he goes into Jerusalem. But then Jesus, as a result of this conversation, gives a strong word about faithfulness. Uh, he says, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. This is the path that God expects us to take. Now, we've been looking at this idea that Jesus is king, right? And we, we saw last week that as 
king, he forgives sins. In fact, that's, we, we saw that. That's the only way that we can have this relationship with God. The only way that, um, that our, re, our relationship with God could be restored is through that forgiveness that God offers us. And God wants to. We saw that. He wants to forgive us, and we need that forgiveness. And so sometimes we might just stop there. Okay, I'm, I, I've got the forgiveness thing. I think I'll just, you know, that's all I need in my life. But Jesus is showing as king that as we have been forgiven and we enter into this relationship with God, uh, part of his family, part of his kingdom, that he expects of us that we would follow him that we would obey him and do his will in our lives. And so we see more and more of this story of this relationship that we have with God. And we have to be careful about just taking one part or just another part and, just, and, and holding that on its own. But we have to see this, this whole thing. God forgives and he calls us and he calls us to follow Christ. And that's what Jesus says here, if he, um, that if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, remember, he said all this after saying what he was going to do. This is the path that God expects us to take. To follow Jesus, we must deny self. We must take up our cross daily and follow him. That's our command from Jesus. So to deny self is to reject our natural human inclination of selfishness, right? We, under, we understand what that selfishness is all about. And if we're honest with, with ourselves, we'll recognize that um, there are things that we do and the only reason we do them is because we're selfish, we're self-centered. And we understand that if that's not how we want to live, that's the battle that we go through in life to make sure that that's not what's driving us. But to deny self is to reject that natural human inclination towards selfishness. To deny self is to submit to someone or something else. For us in Christ, to deny self is to submit to God, to submit to God in our lives. And to take up our cross daily is the picture of dying to self. Because the cross was not just some jewelry or something that we put on a wall, but the cross was an instrument of death. That's what they knew. That's what they understood. To think about the cross and being crucified was to think about death. And Jesus had already said that that was going to happen to him. And that's why later on when Paul was writing, he could say, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. There's that denying self part. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And so to follow Jesus is to deny self and to obey him. Deny self, take up our cross, and follow him. That's what Jesus called the early followers to do. That's what he calls us to do today. That's our call of God. And we need to be ready to deny self in our lives as we are following God. We need to take this part seriously um, because Jesus tells us to do this. And we need to do this because, first of all, Jesus denied himself, right? We know about that. He denied himself. He willingly came from heaven to earth to become a person with a purpose, right? We see this as we read Scripture. He willingly, as he was involved in these, this, these years of ministry in his adulthood, he willingly went to Jerusalem, right? He knew what was in store. He knew uh, that these things were going to happen to him. He didn't look forward to it, right? He, you know, especially we see that as he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, that he knows what this leads towards, this, this painful death on the cross, but that is, that's not even the worst of it. The worst of it is that all of our sins would be placed on him and he would experience the wrath of God, his heavenly Father, for us so that we can have life, we can have salvation because this was God's plan. And he willingly submitted to his, he submitted his will to his father's will. And again, he prayed that prayer of submission in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said that your will be done. So that's what Jesus did. He denied himself. He shows us what that looks like. And Paul 
testified about this. A beautiful passage of Scripture in Philippians that talks about Jesus and what he did and what we should do as a result of it. But in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, Paul says, Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. To empty himself, that was denying himself. To take the form of a bondservant, that is to deny himself. To be made in the likeness of men, to do what um, his father wanted him to do, to, to leave the glory of heaven and come do this for us, that was to deny himself. He denied himself and his wishes, his desires of what he had. He was willing to give all of that up for us. And then Paul continues to say that he humbled himself. He became obedient, even to the point of death on the cross. That's denying himself. And so today, church, we must be ready to deny self because Jesus showed us how to do it. He did it for us. He denied himself to give us life. He's our example. And that's something we need to look at and think about. And also, we must be ready to deny self because secondly, the flesh leads to death, not life. The flesh leads to death, not life. Living for self is living in the flesh, and the flesh destroys you. It doesn't give life. Selfishness destroys you. Selfishness destroys relationships. And that's why Paul tells us to walk in the spirit and not walk in the flesh. And we, and we have to do one or the other. In life, we're going to walk in the Spirit by the power of God, obeying God, living for God, submitting to God, or we're going to walk in the flesh. And when we're walking in the flesh, we are walking towards destruction and not life because the flesh can't give life. Um, in fact, Paul reminds us that the f living in the flesh makes us a slave to sin, right? We'll just continue in sin if we're going to live in the flesh. It's a slave to sin. Now, that's not how it's marketed today. That's not how it's advertised that you do all these things and you're going to become a slave to sin. But that's what, it ha that's what happens in our life if we just start living by the flesh, living by the desires of the flesh. We will just be enslaved to sin in our life. Paul shows us that the flesh leads to death and destruction. The desire of the flesh is strong, right? It's a battle. It's a battle that we have in our lives, and so we need to make sure we understand this because to say, I will deny self, means I'm battling against the flesh and those human desires that are not leading me to God, and I'm going to submit to God, and I'm going to uh, follow God obediently in my life. And so the desire of the flesh is strong, and it's deceitful. The, 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 the desires of the flesh are deceitful, and they want us to crave worldly things. So think about it. In life, when you have that craving for the things of this world, that craving of what this world has to offer as opposed to what God has to offer, when we think about that, we, rec we have to recognize that's coming from the flesh. That's not coming from God. Riches and worldly desires, those things that can take our eyes off of God. And if anything takes our eyes off of God, that's wrong. So whatever it is, whatever those desires are, we have to make sure that we're not selfishly following them, but submissively that we keep our eyes on the Lord and follow Him. We know of the deceit of worldly desires brought on by the flesh. When you... When you live by the flesh, you will not bear fruit for God. Jesus teaches us this. When you live by the flesh, you will not bear fruit for God. We see this in the parable of the sower. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 22, when Jesus describes the weedy soil, the, the soil of, of thorns, this is what he says. And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word, and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. It becomes unfruitful. 
And so either he's not bearing fruit of becoming a Christian, or if he's, if he's got caught up in these thorns, he's not going to bear fruit for God. You see, worrying about the world and the things of this world is a result of the flesh, not the spirit. We can't um, lift up worry and say it's such a good thing that we're so worried about stuff. No, worrying about the things of this world do not come from the Spirit. That doesn't come from God. That comes from the flesh. And then he talks about wealth and how wealth can be tempting and deceiving. And think about this. Why do people play the lottery? Why do people play the lottery? Because it's marketed to say... You win the lottery, and life will be good, right? You win the lottery, and you're not going to have financial issues. You're going to take care of yourself and your children and your parents. You're not going to have any problems because that money is going to take care of all those issues. Anything that you don't like doing now but you're compelled to do because you have to make a living, you're not going to have to do that anymore. So life will be, uh, life will be of luxury and life will be a vacation, right? So life will be just great. But you studied it, and it's not that way, right? That's not what happens when people win the lottery. But that's the lie of the lottery. And that's why they want you to buy those tickets, so that you, because they want you to believe that lie. Life will be better. Life will be easier. So we are traveling several years ago. I'm driving down the road on vacation. And as we were driving down the road, we we're listening to the radio. And as we we're listening to the radio, a um, you know different things were coming on, and maybe as a news station. And it came up that that um, they had just found out that who had won the big lottery. And, you know, somebody had won the big lottery. And you know, when they first win it, you don't know who it is, and they just kind of tell you it's, he's from this state or something like that. And so it turns out they 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 named the person. Um, who had won one of these big lotteries. And the thing that was interesting is they said about this person was that he was already a millionaire. Now, he was a millionaire. And I'm thinking, why does a millionaire play the lottery? Why, why would he do it? Because the lie of wealth and riches. Because if you have one million, you know you need two, right? And you're never going to be satisfied. And there's always going to be that desire for more. And that's what happens when the flesh leads us. It leads us to want more things, more and more, not closer to God, but further away from God. Wealth in the world is tempting and deceiving. The desires of the flesh, they're tempting and deceiving. And so that person in the weedy soil, they don't deny self and they don't bear fruit. That the, the deceitfulness of wealth choke out the world, though choke out the word, and he doesn't produce fruit. That's living in the flesh instead of denying self. It leads to death. It doesn't lead to life. And there's one more thought about why we need to deny self. Because Jesus is king. That's why. He's king. That's why we deny self. Yes, he's our example. We saw the example of Jesus. Yes, he did deny himself. He shows us how it's done and that we can do it as well. But Jesus ascended, and he's at the right hand of God, and he is now king of kings and lord of lords. And as followers of God, we are to submit our lives to Jesus because Jesus is king. And since he's king... I follow him, I obey him, I submit to him. That's my response to him because of who he is. I follow him, which means I deny myself. I follow him, which means I walk in the spirit and I don't walk according to the flesh. I follow him, which means I focus my life um, not to gain the things of this world, but I focus my life on submitting to God. That's what it means to follow Jesus. When we are selfish and focused on the world, we will become ashamed of Jesus, right? We'll become ashamed of him. And in our passage today that we just looked at, of just a, a few verses later, Jesus spoke the words as king and lord over us. Luke chapter 9, verse 26. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, 
the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. When you deny self, you'll follow Jesus and you won't be ashamed of him. In fact, you will proclaim Jesus. You will honor Jesus. That's what happens when we are denying self and following him. You look forward to seeing Jesus. That's the message we learn from King Jesus. You and me, we must be willing to deny self and follow him. So take an inventory of your life. Examine your desires, your decisions of life. What do they want to accomplish? What are you trying to accomplish? What, what are those goals and desires and decisions? How do you want to live this life? How do you treat others? All these things that we can look at in our heart, our life, our decisions, our desires. Does it show a self-centered life? A life living according to the flesh? Or does it show that you're denying self? to follow Christ. Though that inventory will tell us, right? It's going to tell you um, where you are in your relationship with God. If you're living by the flesh and, just, and calling yourself a child of God, or if you're denying self and living for Christ. That's what Jesus expected of those early followers. That's what Jesus expects from us today, to deny self and to follow Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, I, I come before you and thank you for your word. I thank you for these words of Jesus um, today that we've looked at. And I pray, Father, that we would have that um, right understanding of relationship that, um, yes, uh, we've been saved through forgiveness, and yes, we've been brought into your kingdom, into your family, and, but, but yes, Jesus is Lord. He is King. And we need to make that decision to follow him. We know, Lord, really we know that if we just want to do it on our own and live for ourselves, that we, we realize that doesn't bring life. And so what Jesus is offering is life. That life of submission brings true life, true abundance. And so help us to recognize that and not believe any of those lies against that. And let us each, Lord, be faithful to you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we have our invitation song this morning, if there is a decision you need to make for Christ, we want to give you that opportunity. If you have a prayer request, we'll be glad to pray with you. Let's go ahead and stand together as we sing.